Welcome. Today I'm going to be demonstrating multi-factor authentication with Okta using the Okta API. So if you're interested in security, multi-factor authentication, and APIs, you're in the right place. There are only two requirements for you to do this demo yourself, and that is to have an Okta organization, which you can create at developer.okta.com. You can click on sign up over here and create your free developer account. And you'll also need a tool called Postman for making the API requests, and you can get that at getpostman.com. Now I've created my Okta developer organization and I'm logged into it over here. And the first thing you'll need to do after you set up your admin console is to come up here to developer console and switch to the classic UI. That just gives us some more uh, menu options which we'll be using in this demonstration. So there's a little bit of setup in the Okta admin console and then we're going to switch over to interacting with the API. So first thing I'm going to do is come over to security and multi-factor. And on the factor types tab, I'm going to click edit and I'm going to enable Okta Verify. So we support a variety of factor types. For this demonstration, I'm going to be demonstrating Okta Verify, which supports push notifications. Now I want to draw your attention over to the Factor Enrollment tab. There's a default policy and eligible factors. Okta Verify has already been selected automatically and it's set as optional. So I'm going to leave that rule as is and the next thing we're going to look at is enforcement. So we want to create a sign-on policy so that when people sign on they must use a second factor, in this case Okta Verify. So I'm going to choose Security and Authentication and I'm going to click the Sign On tab here and add a new Okta Sign On policy. So we'll call this API Demo Policy API Demo Policy Description and we're going to assign it to the Everyone group. This is the built-in group and it's literally every user account that belongs to Okta. So I'm going to create this policy and add a rule. So we'll call this API Demo Rule. And I'm going to leave it as user's IP is anywhere. So we could shape this and limit this rule to specific IP addresses. We're not going to do this. We're going to leave it with any authentication type. What we are going to do is click the prompt for factor and I'm going to select every time, meaning that every time a user authenticates, they're required to provide a second factor, and in this case it's going to be Okta Verify. Let me create that rule. So now we've done everything that we need to do on the Okta Admin Console side, and we're going to switch over to Postman. Now one thing about Postman is um, we want to, I'm going to exit Postman, because what I want to show you is that from the Okta developer site we have a set of Postman collections that you can install directly into Postman to work with the Okta API. So I clicked on the Docs link. I'm going to scroll down a little bit and click on the Getting Started with the Okta API link. And you can see that we do a lot of, of Postman to exercise the API. Where I want to bring you to is this collections quick reference and this is just a table of all the different Postman collections that we have. These are collections of requests to interact with the Okta API. The one that I'm going to grab right now is authentication and if I click the run in Postman link I can then choose Postman for Windows and I can tell it to open Postman and that's why I exited Postman to begin with uh, because you need to click the open Postman link in order for it to install that collection. So now when Postman launches you can see over here that I have an authentication collection with 40 requests. That's the link that I just clicked on. Now before we start exercising these requests 
I'm going to set up an environment which is a nice feature of Postman. It allows us to set up environment variables. So I click the gear icon and manage environments. And I'm going to add a new environment and we'll just call it API demo. And I'm going to set up a few keys here which we'll use in our requests. So the first one is username and that is the email address that I set up previously in my Okta environment. And I'm also going to set up password. I have a pretty simple password here and rest assured I've changed it before you're seeing this video. I'm going to set up a few more. Uh, URL is an important one and that is the unique URL of my Okta organization. So I'm just going to copy and paste this link here for URL and I don't want the end stuff. I just want the base URL and I want to get rid of the dash admin. So this is the base URL for my Okta organization. I'm going to set up a couple more environment variables which we're going to use in a little bit and I'll explain what they are when we get to them. So one is called factor ID and the other is called state token. I'm going to leave those blank for now. Okay. So now the first thing I'm going to do is use the primary authentication endpoint. And if you notice up here, Postman has a great feature to use placeholders from the environment. Now, if I hover my mouse over URL, you'll see that it's an unresolved variable. And that's just because I need to select the environment that I just created. So I set up the API demo environment. Now that I've selected it, we can see that URL resolves to the variable that I set up. If we look at the body for this primary authentication call, we can see that it's passing in the username and password. Now, if we didn't set up MFA enrollment, we would just get back a status of success when we posted to this endpoint, this auth n endpoint. In this case, because we set up MFA, uh, let's see, authentication failed. So that's a little bit of the demo monster. I probably didn't set up my password correctly here. So bear with me a sec. Ah, I misspelled my own email address, it looks like. Yes, it's Micah at a fitner.com. Okay, now that I've updated that environment variable, I'm going to click send. And here we see the status that we get back is MFA enroll. And the factor options that we have are push. That's Okta verifies push factor type. So now, because it's optional, I could continue on and not enroll, but I am going to enroll so that we can demonstrate this in action. So in the upper left, I have an enroll folder in this authentication collection. I'm going to expand that folder, and I'm going to tell it that I want to enroll in Okta Verify Push Factor. Now let's see what the Okta Verify Push Factor requires. So it's going to use the same URL, and in the body, it's sending a state token and a factor type. So the purpose of the state token is for when you have a multi-step authentication process, as we do in this case. So we attempted primary authentication. We got back a status of MFA enroll. In order to continue that enrollment, we're going to need to set this state token. So you'll notice one of the, the parts of the response that we got here right at the top is the state token. And what I can do in Postman is I can highlight that state token. I can right click and then it has this nice, nice feature where I can set one of the environment variables directly. So I right click, I choose set API demo and state token. So I already set up that environment variable. Now we're setting its value. So I jump back over here to our enroll request. I'm going to click send. And now the response that we get back is MFA enroll activate and waiting. And the state token is the same. We're going to keep using that state token until we get to an endpoint in this authentication process. 
So right now the factor result is waiting and that means that since this is an asynchronous factor type, we have to poll to see when the user has finished their enrollment. So if I come over here to the bottom of my collection, you'll notice that I have a poll for factor enrollment request. That poll for factor enrollment request, it takes a factor ID and it uses the state token as well to see if the user has finished enrollment. So over here on my response, let me just uh, open up this tab a little bit. It's a little finicky, here we go. So over here in my response where I have the MFA enroll activate waiting, I also have a factor ID and so now I'm going to use that unique factor ID. I'm going to set that in our environment. And now over here in poll for factor enrollment in this request, when I send it, I can see that the status is still MFA enroll activate waiting. So if you were writing an application, you could use this endpoint to poll to see when the user had completed their activation. Okay, so now jumping back to our in the response to our enroll request, if I scroll down a little bit, you'll see that we also get a QR code. And this is used to program the, the Okta Verify mobile application. And so I'm going to copy that QR code link, and I'm literally going to paste it right into my browser. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch the Okta Verify app on my mobile device. Now this is my real iPhone. I'm mirroring its screen. This isn't an emulator. I'm going to launch the Okta Verify mobile app and I'm going to click on add an account. I'm going to touch add an account. And the first thing I need to do since this is the first time I'm launching the app is to allow camera access and push notifications. So I'm going to allow Okta Verify access to the camera and I'm going to allow push notifications. So now this is the real camera of the phone and I'm going to go and capture the QR code. And now when I touch ID you can see that we've successfully enrolled in push authentication for Micah at a fit nerd. So now that completes the enrollment side of things. Now let's go and look at what happens when I try to authenticate again. Because remember, we created a sign-on policy that's now going to enforce that MFA requirement. So I'm going to come back to primary authentication and I'm going to send it this request once more. And now if you notice, the status that we get back is MFA required. And now we have a brand new state token because once again this is a multi-step process and in this case it's asynchronous. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to set the state token once again because we're in a new flow and we have a new state token. And so now it's MFA required. If I come over here to verify, I have a verify and poll push factor. So when I choose that request, notice that where it's going to be making the request is the same factor ID. That hasn't changed. And in the body, it's going to be making use of the state token. That's our new state token. Now if I send this request, the, state, the status that we get back this time is MFA challenge waiting. Now this same endpoint is used for polling and so I can, I can keep hitting send and I'll keep getting back that same status, MFA challenge waiting until the user acknowledges the challenge in the Okta Verify app. So this is the endpoint that you would use to both do the initial push and then to poll to see uh, to when the user actually acknowledges that challenge. Now if I switch back to my device, we can see that I've gotten a push notification and as soon as I click on the approve button, it requests my touch ID, I give it my thumbprint, 
And now I've acknowledged I've successfully responded to the push authentication request. And now that I've done that, when I send this once more, we can see that we finally arrived at a terminating point because our status is success. So the authentication now has been successful. And now notice I have a session token and I can use this session token to further interact with the Okta API. So we've come full circle now where we've enrolled in MFA and we've authenticated using MFA and we've done it completely using the API. So hopefully you found this instructive and useful. If this is interesting to you and you want to learn more about the Okta API, we have a great course called uh, the Okta Platform for Developers course. It's a three-day course and it goes into all of the detail of all of the aspects of the Okta API and how you'd use it in your own development process. You can check that out on Okta.com and we have a link to services and training and certification and this is hands-on training and from there you can find the course description and you can sign up for the course. It's Okta Platform for Developers. Hope to see you there. I am one of the instructors that teaches the course, and I look forward to seeing you in the course. Have a great day.